Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you today with a weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. I've got some great information to give you today about something I talk about in my office every day with many patients because it's the beginning of a lot of their problems, a lot of diseases, especially autoimmune diseases, but also a lot of the reason for their fatigue, brain fog. Um, I'm talking about your gut microbiome. Very important. Maybe as important as anything in your health is, is what your gut is doing, uh, that balance of good and bad bacteria. Did you know that 99% of the DNA in your body is not your DNA? It's bacterial DNA from your microbiome in your gut. Think about that. 99% of it's not even your own DNA. Um, interesting. We're born sterile. In other words, we're, our guts are born without any bacteria in it. But sh shortly after birth, the process of birth, you start being colonized with all these bacteria. Good and bad, hopefully more good. But that's when it starts, and you'll always be colonized after that. Um, so it happens very quickly, um, and it can be a good thing. That's why a vaginal birth is probably better than a cesarean section. But in any event... We really can't control our genes. You really can't, but we can control our microbiome. Um, so that's important. These microbes, good and bad, come from a lot of things besides birth. I mean, you acquire them, you get rid of them throughout your lifetime. Things like food, other people you come into contact with, the air you breathe, the water you drink, your pets can affect your gut. Uh, the soil, even stress affects your gut microbiome. Think about that gut-brain connection. You know, your brain really is under the direction of your gut. That's really interesting, isn't it? 42% um, of Americans are obese. 11% have diabetes that we know about. Probably a lot of other ones. Definitely pre-diabetes is just rampant. 47% of U.S. adults have hypertension, 47%. 11% have food allergies, and that's probably a low estimate. We do a lot of food allergy testing in our office, important. We also do a lot of stool testing, as I'll talk about. But really the most important factor with your gut microbiome is what you eat, what you put in your mouth. 60% of our food is ultra-processed. Um, that means they strip it of the nutrients and add chemicals and sugars. You know, you really develop a relationship with food. You ever think about that? You have a relationship with food. And, and a lot of people take it to extremes. You know, too much, too little. You know, you love sugar, it makes you feel better, and all that stuff. But think about your relationship with food. And it's important. It can be good, it can be bad. Um, what's healthy for your gut microbiome? Good question. Really, these gut microbes need dietary fiber. That's what they live on. The gut microbes, they eat your mucus lining of your gut if they don't have fiber. So you have a, you have a mucus layer in your gut that you need for protection. You know, when that starts getting eating, eating the way, you get leaky gut. Then there's all these inflammatory foods and toxins get in, kick off an autoimmune process. Um, this means that the lining protects your gut. And when it's gone, it gets inflamed. Everything gets kicked off from inflammation with every disease known to man. Antibiotics can destroy good bacteria in your gut. I always take a probiotic, especially... And you probably double up on when you're on an antibiotic if you have to be on an antibiotic. Um, that's one reason you need probiotics. I think every everybody, child or adult, needs probiotics. Um, and those probiotics need to be nourished with prebiotics. Think of prebiotics as food for the probiotics. Um, very important. You know, there's a problem when people have destroyed their gut. Um, and what happens with you just tell them to eat fiber and their body can't react to it very well. 
So when, when I get a patient with IBS through the years, you tell them to eat more fiber, and they say, I can't. It causes bloating and gas. That's because it does. You're overwhelming them. You need to start in small amounts, and plus you need to balance that gut microbiome before you start dumping a lot of fiber. You're just going to make them worse, and they won't adhere to it. But they do need fiber eventually. Um when you can't get your gut happy by changing your diet, you need to probably get some stool testing. You know, it's really the future. I've had mine checked. Um, your stool carries a ton of information about you compared to other people with similar conditions. It's interesting, like asthma, obesity, depression. And just like I said, remember, your gut talks to your brain. You know, people that have these Illnesses like asthma have kind of similar gut microbes. Um, it's interesting because when they do mice testing and they transfer the stool of a depressed mouse, you can say, how does a mice get depressed? Well, they have ways of getting them depressed and ways of getting them happy. But anyway, when they transfer the stool of the depressed group of mice to a group of happy mice, the happy mice get depressed. That's really interesting. Um, and I'll talk about that further with twin studies in a minute. But, you know, in rural areas of the world, the gut microbiome is way more diverse than in industrialized countries like the United States. And really what you want is diversity. Um, you want, you know, you think about the soil. You want a rich, diverse, with a lot of different types of microbes that are good in your gut. You're more able to fight things off. Nourish. Think of how a good, rich soil nourishes great plants and flowers. That's what you want for your gut. Um, so if you got a lot of bad bacteria in there, you're going to be sick. That's the bottom line. You're going to be sick. And if you don't straighten your gut out, no medicine's going to really work as effectively as it could. Um, so when you change your diet, you realize you have a problem, change it a little bit at a time. Uh, if you overwhelm it, it's not going to work. I call it microdosing. Um, and you need to change your lifestyle, and not just for a few months, for life. You know, that's the most important advice I could give you. Change your lifestyle if you're sick or you're tired, or you feel bad, you hurt. Change your lifestyle. And that encompasses a lot of things, but always look at your gut microbiome first. You know, it's interesting because people process the same types of foods differently, like an apple. You know, and some people, they eat an apple, it'll pop their sugars up. Other people, it'll just not change at all. So people are different, and it's because of that gut microbiome and probably some other factors too. One way that I recommend people check um, how a food affects them is by getting a continuous glucose monitor. I've done this. I'm not a diabetic, but I've done it, and I've grown up with two type 1 diabetics that do it continuously for decades. And so it gives you a lot of information. Even if you're not a diabetic, um, get a Freestyle Libre, or there's another one coming out this summer that's going to be over the counter. You don't need a prescription for it. Um, stay tuned for that one. But... Um, a good way to check the effects of any particular food or drink on your blood sugar is to have one of these and just see what, what when you drank that apple juice, what your blood sugars did during the next two hours. You know, it may change how you do things and what you eat. It did me. Um, so I like these continuous glucose monitors for everybody. Um, interesting twin study that um, I read about. They took stool samples from identical twins, um, and one twin had gotten overweight. The other twin was normal weight. And they used their stool for mice studies, human, human stools for mice studies. So what happened was when they put the stool in the mice, the mice that received the stool from the overweight twi twin got obese, and the stool from the normal weight twin they didn't get obese. So isn't that really interesting how your gut microbiome can dictate how much you weigh? Um, 
They even put stool from Parkinson's patients into mice. And guess what? They developed Parkinson-like symptoms from the stool of a Parkinson patient. Um, you know, we're just starting. This is the tip of the iceberg. This is going to be the future of medicine, I think. It's going to, it's going to really affect a lot of people in a lot of great ways, I think. Fecal microbiome transplants are FDA approved, mostly for C. diff, that really bad, hard to clear uh, gut infection you can get after taking antibiotics. But they work most all the time. They're very rare when they don't work. You know, nobody wants to think about getting somebody else's stool, um, it's, but it, it works. And if you have a C. diff infection, it could kill you. you could do, you'll do anything to, to cure it. But they're also experimenting with this same treatment for MS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, cancer, autism, obesity, like I said, Parkinson's, diabetes, Alzheimer's, arthritis, aging and frailty, dementias. To me, this is incredibly exciting. Um, it just tells you how important that gut microbiome is, and you better start thinking about it. Very few doctors even think about this. A lot, even some of your GI docs don't even think about this. Um, but it's exciting to me. You are what you eat, literally. Um, think about what our ancestors ate. You know, they weren't fat. And they didn't have all these chronic diseases that we have. You might say, well, they didn't live as long as we did. But their health spans are way better. Um, they live healthier. And really, when you think about it, the reason people live longer nowadays is because of different things. It's not because of um, vaccines or you know, newer develops, a lot of it's because of better hygiene, sanitation, those type of things. So that's important. So they lived healthier. They may not have lived as long, but, you know, we're keeping people alive longer, but not healthier. You know, who wants to spend the last 10 years of their life in a nursing home or, you know, debilitated? Uh, not me, for sure. Um, but these ancestors did probiotics in the form of fermented foods. You know, they didn't have all the stuff we do now. They used fermented foods, and they didn't eat processed foods. You know, today in our world, the first thing is you need to cut out as many processed foods as you can. And sugar. Sugar is just so inflammatory. Um, and most everybody needs probiotics these days. They just need it. Um, and remember, people back then, they died of infections, because of lack of sanitation. Nowadays, we have good antibiotics and things to, that we can really help people from. Um, but like I say, we're living longer but not healthier. And your goal is to live healthier. I mean, take a look at around. You know, go to, go to Walmart, go downtown, especially around this area of the country. I mean, people are so unhealthy. You can just look at it. I mean, look at people walking around from back in the 60s uh, and look at them today. It's just an incredible difference. Think about when you went to school, if you're a baby boomer like me back in the 60s, you didn't see obese people. You didn't see a lot of people with diabetes. Now it's, it's everywhere. So it's, it's really scary. Um, but anyway, you know, plus, you know, we didn't really move as much as we do now. There's a gym on every corner. You know, it, you know people don't live longer because there's a gym on every corner now. Um, granted, people sit too much, and people are super stressed. There's my dog. But people are stressed, and like I tell all my patients, stress is a toxin. You know, stress is responsible for about half of what walks into my office. I can tell you, if you get to the root cause of the problem, a lot of times it's stress. Stress affects your microbiome. Remember that. Um, so think about your gut microbiome and how you treat it. Your health literally depends on it. It starts there. And remember, 70% of your immune system is, is located in your gut. Um, you know, I don't care what kind of camp you're in as far as your diet. You know, you may be vegetarian, vegan, carnivore, paleo, Mediterranean, Atkins, keto. You know, people's guts and preferences are different. That's, that's great. 
something may work for one person, may not work for another. Um, so listen to your gut. No matter what kind of diet you're on, definitely cut out processed foods and sugars as much as you can. Um, but think of how you feel, you know, with your gut, mentally and physically, after you eat. You know, I know when I eat junk food and sugar, about half hour later, I feel off. I feel really tired. I get brain fog. I think most people are like me. They really are. And, and you can prove it by looking at that continuous glucose monitor. I think everybody ought to have one, at least to see for a couple of weeks what it's doing. Um, but anyway, I like that tremendously. Um, I really think your gut microbiome does better with most fruits and some vegetables. Um, provided they're fresh and organic as possible. Um, and be aware of how they affect your blood sugar levels. Um, for me, bananas don't do well. For other people, they may do better. Um, but anyway, introduce these into your system slowly. Remember that. Most everyone needs probiotics. I'm a big believer in probiotics. I shamelessly love Digest Shield. That's the, out of all the vitamins I have in my office and that I promote, that's by, by far the one that people get most. And I rarely hear of anybody that it doesn't help. Rarely. I've had a couple, but rarely. It's just so great because it, it's got prebiotics, the right mix of probiotics. It's got digestive enzymes to help you break down your food and digest them. Um, it's got dairy, gluten, and lectin blockers. So if you get some of those, it's, your, you know, it's in everything, it blocks it down. Um, it's hard to avoid a lot of those things. So it really does, it makes you digest things way better. Um, I'm a vitamin lover. Um, and really I consider vitamins part of your daily nutrition. Um, you just can't get enough nowadays. You need vitamins. Um, and Digest Shield is definitely my go-to gut vitamin. Um, so if you don't feel healthy in any way, if you're suffering from chronic diseases, chronic fatigue, if you hurt all the time, you have no idea how many people that come into me that have arthritis that just cut out sugars, go keto or whatever, they change it and they, they bounce their gut microbiome, their joint pain goes away. So I think it's really responsible for most of that. So if you don't feel healthy, think about your gut. Get your gut microbiome healthy. Think about gut testing. If you do an elimination diet and check all this other stuff and start taking probiotics, you know, if nothing's working, you really may have a really messed up microbiome. So think about getting uh, some stool testing. You know, we do that through our office many times. But uh, anyway, I hope this helps. Um, think about your gut microbiome. It determines your health. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.